need to step over the animals. Excuse me, dog. <sighs> we're inside again. Oh, we're crooked. Yeah. Fix that. This will be on the end of it. <laughs> I think it's this side that needs to come up. There you go. A little more. A little more? You always want a little more. <laughs> Shh. Stop. Oh, TMI. Sorry. Sunsets like a tangerine. Let's find a road we've never seen. Life is short. Make it sweet. <laughs> oh, hi. Hi. Morning. Here, not tipsy. Cheers. Good morning. Cheers. Love, Love you. you. Good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday. Howdy doody. Oh. We are inside today because we would not be able to breathe outside. It is horrible. The smoke is so bad and the fires in our area are out. We're just getting everything that blows our way from the other state next to us to the west. <laughs> crappy fornia. <clears throat> and it really is crappy right now. But seriously, it's all sad. the fires is pretty bad. It's no so matter sad. where you are in the uh, three western states. Washington, Oregon, and California, so. Yeah, it's just awful, but awful. But it's just kind of wafting, wafting. It's almost like fog rolling in sometimes. And it was like yesterday evening, I was cooking supper, and I ran down to the mailbox less than five minutes, and it was fine. We opened the doors and the windows because it was we were able to breathe. Less than an hour later, it was so bad we had to close everything up again and couldn't breathe. And there was no wind. It yeah. just, it just kind of very it's gotta slowly. Got to go somewhere, so it just in. keeps moving. It it's, was. It's ugh. very, very calm. There's no winds, and it's kind of a uh, easterly flow, I guess, because it's yeah. coming from the west. Yeah. And it's just so slow, and it just hangs, and it's just ugh. Yeah. So our hearts go out to anybody and everybody that's dealing with the fires and the smoke and any evacuations and any trips that were planned to visit family and you can't now because of the smoke. So we're very fortunate. We're here with family. Um, not fortunate about the smoke, but right now you really just can't get away from it. Mm -mm. So no matter where you go. No. <clears throat> um, being in radio all my life, I've worked with radio engineers, mm -hmm. and now that I'm kind of out of radio, I don't really do that on a day-to-day -day basis, but traveling, you know, with Verizon and AT&T and We Carry T-Mobile, the three like that, mm -hmm. I know quite a few uh, uh, Wi-Fi engineers, and actually, kind of like Chris and Cherie, mm -hmm. you know, with RV Mobile Internet, dot com. I, I met a couple Wi-Fi engineers, a man and a woman, and they got married. The reception was incredible. I'll bet. That's a long way to get there. Yeah, that was a long way to get there. Yes. <laughs> Golly. Wow. You know what's funny is when he was on the radio here in Reno, he did a morning show. And he would tell these stories, and they were so believable until the punchline. He would suck in everybody, including his co-host, and then he would come off with something like that. But you were like, oh, wow, really? Oh, okay. I'm telling you, all, these stories, all these stories I make up are true. Every last one of them. That's what he always told Ashley when she was growing up. <laughs> My mom has gotten to the point where she just doesn't believe him anymore. Anything he says. Quick shout out too to uh, the percussionist who played in my high school band. I know it was a long time ago, but uh, he played the triangle so well. I just want to thank him for every ting. <laughs> every ting. <laughs> okay, I'm done. All tings, every ting. Move along here. There's nothing to see. Or hear. <laughs> or nothing to laugh at. Move along. <laughs> oh. Last Saturday, I uh, went early to go get groceries, and and we got to do groceries, put those away, and clean. There was a baseball doubleheader, so we were watching 
baseball a lot. The poor Cardinals, because they had their their 17 day virus, virus confinement. Yeah, confinement. They um, <clears throat> yeah. They're having a lot of double headers, a lot, and they still have a few more. Don't They've they? got another four or five left Isn't that in crazy? 20 days. Even though they're cutting like the that. games down to only seven innings, that's still a lot in one day. Oh well. Yep. And I did laundry, and I was just getting everything ready to go to my mom's for a couple of days. Over the holiday, she left me alone again on a holiday weekend. Labor Day, whoopie doo. <clears throat> so I was by myself, just me and the animals, on a holiday weekend. She left. Do you hear the violins playing? <laughs> oh, the poor baby. He's right here with my sister and my brother-in-law. <laughs> they had guests and I didn't want to bother them, so I was just sitting here by myself on a holiday weekend. He, he, want, he was antisocial, so he's <laughs> blaming me for not being here because he was all alone. He didn't have to be alone. It was his choice. Whatever. <laughs> Talk to the hand. <laughs> Oh, you're funny. Very. Now that's funny. <laughs> I don't care who you are. <laughs> oh, oh gosh. Okay, so Sunday <clears throat> was the day I was going to my mom's. But first, I had a lunch date with my girlfriend Robin again from high school. It's so cool that we're here. I mean, yeah. If it wasn't for the virus and the pandemic and all that other crap that goes along with it, we would not be here. We would have stopped by Reno just to say hi to everybody for a few weeks and then been on our little merry way. But because we're here, she gets to see some friends that she grew up with, went to school with. Yeah. It's really kind of cool. Me? Don't worry about me. I just sit here and be alone on a holiday weekend. Oh, whatever. He's got friends here, too. What? He has lots of friends here. And if he wanted to be sociable and hey. not be alone... He could have been. I went to JJ's house. Yeah, you did on Wednesday. I yes. spent time with him. I talked to him <laughs> on the phone quite a bit, so yep. we're fine. See? You're not alone. Not alone, and except on the, a holiday weekend. <laughs> How special is Labor Day to you guys? Do you have family <laughs> gatherings and big dinners? Maybe a barbecue to say goodbye to summer? <clears throat> but... Is it, is it? So she went to lunch with her friend Rob. Yes, I did. It was very nice getting to see her, and uh, she wanted to see my or my mom wanted to see her. So um, I let mom know because the restaurant that we went to was just right near my aunt's house where we were going afterwards yeah. anyway. So um, we had a nice lunch again, and it's really going to be kind of hard not getting to see people that I've been getting used to seeing over the past few months that we've been here. Um, it's kind of nice being home. I mean, this is our home, and we always have home with us, but our our home city, or my home city anyway. Yeah. So, I mean, you were here for a long time, too. <clears throat> I was but, here for a long time. But, um, you know, I've got friends that I grew up with since I was, you know, nine years old and on up. So, um, that's been nice. That but, was like 60 years ago, isn't it? Almost. Almost. Look who's talking. You should not call the kettle black, Mr. Pot. <laughs> um, so after, I, so I was going to spend the night with Mom on Sunday night and Monday night. So after lunch with Robin and Mom came and say, said hey to her, um, we went and did a couple things from, for my Aunt Muriel again at her new little apartment, getting it all squared away and organized. And there's still more organizing to do there. She has... Just it, kind of like my mom. We, I helped clean my mom's closet out, and it was like they just. I don't know what to do with this. I'm gonna stash it in a drawer. I don't know what to do with this. I'm gonna stash it in a bag and put it up in the closet. And there's just both of them. There's just stuff like that. Yesterday I. Now went, I know where you get it. That's true. It could be. It's hereditary. I am not as bad as them. So, there you go. Hey, I know where things are, at least. That's true. <clears throat> at least you make a list where you shove stuff. That's right. That's what I should call it. Not where is it. It should be where's it shoved. <laughs> where's it shoved? Here's a new list. <laughs> where's it shoved? Oh, no. Oh, goodness. <laughs> so, um, so, like I said, at Mom's. Yep. We even have, I even have wrote it on the board that 
Tom spent the holiday alone with a sad face. <laughs> but I was helping Mom and Aunt Muriel get get ready or get organized and and stuff. And I still have another project to do at my mom's. Is I told her when I was there last time. I said, "Okay, the next time I'm here, we're emptying all these drawers. We're dumping them in a pile in the middle of the room, and then we're going to start sorting." <laughs> because she's got like all these little nightstands. She has a a little studio apartment, and she's so her desk. And all these little nightstands that have the single drawer. And then she's got stuff, of course, stacked underneath them. So we're taking all that stuff out, dumping it. She even has a dresser that she has um, in there, an extra dresser. She's got one in her closet and then one in the room. And it's just got stuff stashed in it, too. So I said, we're emptying all of those. We're dumping them out. And we are going to sort everything. <laughs> I mean, she says she's got like 10 decks of cards. We could find one. Who knows where the other ones are? All of her games should be together, and they're not. She one card shy of a full deck anyway. <gasps> Ooh, okay. Tom dubbed <laughs> my mom and my Aunt Muriel the Fruitcake Sisters. <laughs> they have gone on cross-country drives together on these road trips. This was several years ago, yeah. at least 10 now. It's been It's been a while since they've done it when my aunt still lived in Massachusetts and mom lived here in Reno. So Aunt Mary would fly out to Reno and they would drive across country and visit people in Massachusetts and all along the way and then they would drive back. Well their first trip across country, what did they take with them? Good Lord, a regular microwave that you have in your kitchen. She unplugged it, packed it in the car because if they're gonna stop at a hotel overnight we want to make sure that we have a microwave. For their instant coffee in the morning. Instant coffee. That's it. It's like, go downstairs <laughs> and get instant coffee. Most hotels supply that. Not the ones that Mom and Aunt Muriel could afford oh. to stay at. So they took their own microwave. So I gave them the name the Fruitcake Sisters. Yep. And just, they should have <laughs> had video recording the entire trip because they could have done a whole reality sitcom type of show. They're hysterical when they they're together. They are together the funniest yeah. pair. Yes. Oh, my God. They are so funny. <laughs> I was laughing at them yesterday when I was there putting assembling this piece of furniture Mom got um, for my Aunt Muriel. And we were, I was just laughing at the two of them going at it. It's just too funny. Too funny. Well, you got to visit JJ, like we said. Yeah. Yeah. Went yeah. over, saw my buddy JJ. Yep. I got some work done. And I also uh, had to get uh, my daughter's birthday card, mm -hmm. Jolene's birthday. We said happy birthday to last Saturday. Her birthday was on Thursday. So I need, needed to make up a card, so I made a pretty little card for her. And I had already made her birthday present. She saw something on Facebook or Pinterest or something, and she tagged me in a post and said, Mommy, I need one of these. I said, okay, we'll go shopping for the yarn and you pick it out. So she picked it out and I ha I've had it made, which is a surprise. I was done making a gift in advance and not late. I always think, oh, I've got time, I've got time. And then something happens and takes up that time. Yeah, no more. I'm trying not to. Nothing happens and takes up the time. She just keeps yes. pushing it forward and Oh no, forward I have all forward. these plans to do things, but if I don't write it out so that he knows about it, he takes my time and needs me to do this or to do that or to go with him here, to go with him there. You'd oh. think I'd be used to going by myself because I get left <laughs> alone on holiday weekends. <laughs> One time, Labor Day. Wow. <laughs> And now he's not going to let me live it oh, down. Oh, my goodness. Okay, move along along yep. here. Okay. <laughs> so Thursday, which was Jolene's birthday, she had asked if we could pick the boys up from school because she and Scott were going to go up to Lake Tahoe. Yeah, they went up there for And she was going to do, do some wake surfing and go to lunch and mm -hmm. hang out at the beach. And then... So she had a great birthday. She did. She did. I'm so proud of her, man, getting up on that... And up at Tahoe on Thursday, it was freezing. It was Tahoe cold. water is icy cold all year round. You know, it's usually 50 to 60 degrees most of the time. 
uh, in the hot, hottest days of summer or the deepest part of the lake, surface temperature might get to 75. That's pushing it. But most of the time, 50 to 60, and they're out there wakeboarding in this yeah, stuff. I mean, it's in... cold. No, I mean just a swimsuit. Yeah. <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> yeah, she was, it's, we, um, Scott got video of her doing, doing the wake surfing, and she's just, she says, I was shaking so hard, and she's trying to concentrate <laughs> on what she's doing, and hold on to the rope, and she's just shivering like crazy. You could tell and, she was shivering a lot. There was a lot of waves around her in the water. <laughs> Okay, now that's funnier than your big long joke. <laughs> oh, poor Jolie. So they had ended up having a wonderful time together. And then um, when they got home, we all went to dinner at Ruth's yeah. Chris yeah. downtown. Went so that down was to really the good. Silver Legacy Hotel Casino. They, you know, any casino got big restaurants in it. And they got yeah. a Ruth Chris's in there. And uh, pretty good. Had a great time. Yep. We laughed halfway, not halfway, we laughed all the way through dinner. I mean, it was just one barb our, after another. Our and... grandsons are hysterical. <clears throat> They're both so funny. But They're we had very a great entertaining. Time. Yes. And, and Jolene had a great birthday. Yes, she did. She I'm even got really a card glad. from Dolly Parton that sang Jolene to her. Imagine that. Wow. Yeah. She <laughs> sang happy birthday to Jolene. Yes, that's what she yeah. did. did. Yeah. So. Yep, yep. So like I said, yesterday I went to go help mom assemble this over the bathroom shelving unit for yeah. my aunt so she could put all of her night creams and this and that and this and that and night creams. Whatever. She has she has more cosmetics and products than any store. And she's eighty something, okay? Yeah. So um you left early in the morning yesterday because on your way back from JJ's, what happened? Well, we <clears throat> we did a video on the truck. We did a 20-year overhaul on the truck, and that went up last week. Actually, yeah, just this past week. It happened on Wednesday. And uh, we let you know line item by line item what we had done, what the final cost was. Go look at that video. Um I left JJ's house, I went a mile and a half, and I'm coming up to the shell station, and I look down, and the oil pressure does this and goes down to zero, and I freaked out, and I thought, oh my God, I need to turn the motor off right now. So I pulled in, I mean, I just pulled in off the road right there at the entrance and shut it down. And I thought, okay, let's turn it back on and look, and there's zero oil pressure. And so I get out and I check the oil. There's oil in it. It's a quart low. And I'm thinking, why is it a quart low? Oh, we had a leak and they had to replace the sensor. Okay. <clears throat> so now that was the O-ring. So, yeah, we had it, but it was still an oil leak. Right, and, but it wasn't and, the sensor. And though. so, okay, okay the O-ring on the sensor that held it together. Right. So... I thought, I'm not driving this thing till I call the guy, the mechanic. So I call the mechanic, <clears throat> I get an answering machine. So I hung up, I waited about five seconds, call back, I get the answering machine. So I thought, okay, I'll wait a little while, I'll call back. So I waited five seconds more, and I called a third time, <laughs> and I got the answering wild. machine. And at that point, I was getting pretty PO'd. So I call her, and I said, can you do me a favor? I said, I'm stranded. The truck has broke down, broken down. Can you call Nick at TNT and let him know this is what happened? Boom, 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 boom. So, within within two minutes, I get a call from the mechanic, and I'm thinking, okay. So I I had called him and I he answered the phone and it was almost closing time, so they were shuffling the vehicles yeah. around and stuff, so he wasn't by the phone. But uh, he picked up, and I asked him, I said, can you please call Tom? He's stranded. Uh, the oil sensor, or, you know, the oil gauge is completely down. I said, he says, well, your truck won't, nothing will happen to your engine because your truck will just stop if it I, doesn't have oil. I did not and know it, this about this diesel engine, the power stroke. It'll shut down just like a generator will shut down when it gets low on uh, oil. It just shuts down to protect it. I didn't know so that. So I asked, I begged Nick, I said, can you please call him back 
Because I wanted him to hear that from Nick. He wouldn't have believed me. He would have said, no, you heard something wrong. You know, that, that's, that can't be. But hearing it from Nick, he'd believe it. So Nick called him right back and He says, just, him. does it start? And I said, I don't know. I'm afraid to turn it on. He says, turn it on. So I turned it on, started it. And I said, it's running. He said, it's just the gauge. It's a bad sensor sending information to the gauge. You've got oil pressure. Don't worry about it. Drive it home, then bring it in here tomorrow morning. We'll replace it, and we'll get it all up to snuff for you again. I'm like, okay. <clears throat> yeah, so I have never driven a vehicle where the gauges don't work on it like that, and there's no oil pressure, and I'm like freaked out. Yeah. All the way home, and then the next morning, all the way into Reno, I'm like looking at the gauge going, come on, baby, pop up, pop up. And I'm waiting to hear from him before I leave to, to go to my mom's. And I'm like, oh, please let him get there. And then I, I was thinking, if he doesn't, then he needs to call TNT for them to come and tow him. Because once again... Minor, it was it's very minor. Another minor thing, but... It's nice to get the minor things out of the way yep. before we hit the road in, in October. The end of this month, the 1st of October. So I'm, I'm still driving the truck hard. Just like we said in the video. Again, go back and look at the video. The 20-year overhaul truck video that we put up last week. <clears throat> but, you know, <clears throat> we'll work things out one by one, and, yeah, and that thing should be up to snuff by the time we hit the put road. a lot of new stuff on it, and just like if you buy a brand new RV, there's all kinds of kinks to be worked out. It's the same type of thing. You know, it's like so. the old ring It was a brand new old ring and it cracked. You know, yeah. the sensor for this just needed to be replaced. He went in and put a $20 sensor in it, no charge. He, yeah, says, he says, just just go. Was it the same sensor that had been replaced? I don't they know. Redid? We don't, we're not really sure. So I don't There's know. so many stinking sensors in cars these days that... But hey, it works right now. I'm just waiting for the next thing to fall. <clears throat> and we're just fortunate and happy that it happens here while we still have two vehicles yeah. and everything, so... And I'm still kind of iffy on buying the set of tires because I had decided, no, nah, I'll wait another year because these tires are five years old and they look great. They really do. And they've got great tread on them still. Oh, well, that was something else and, that we did. I didn't write down. I forgot we went to uh, go get our batteries checked because... Yeah, but we explained all that oh, we, at one we? point. Yeah. Okay, last <clears throat> week, I, last weekend. So, I but now I'm... I'm teeter-tottering again now I'm thinking okay let's just go get the tires and get it done you know it's put new tires on it just be done with it I only buy six tires and for the spare what I'll do is I'll take one of the inside dualies that has like seven and eight thirty seconds tread left on it put that on the spare even though it's an older tire it's like it's a spare you know, I don't, I don't want to spend $300 for a spare and have it just sit there for the next five years. Yeah. Not that we don't have flats, because we have a couple times. <clears throat> but, oh well. So we'll see. Tomorrow I'll wake up and I'll go, ah, I don't need tires yet. <laughs> well, when we were at Les Schwab, you asked them about to check them. And yeah, he, he measured the tread on them and he says, your tread's good. He says, your tire's look in great shape. You know, for the age of the tires, they're five years old. He says they they look great. So, but that was a Les Schwab guy. They're in business to sell tires, and he said exactly, don't nah, buy tires. Don't buy tires. Yeah. <clears throat> That's when you know somebody's telling you the truth. It's like when they yeah. have the opportunity to say, "Oh, you really should because of this, this, and yeah. this," and and they say, "Nah, you don't need any. So don't waste your money." We'll move along. Today I want tires. Tomorrow, like I said, I'll wake up and I'll go. Ah, I'll, go. <laughs> I'll wait another year. <laughs> Yep. So uh, it's, you know, the middle of September. We are running out of time here. We've been here since June, uh, since May, actually. Yeah. Since May, not here at my sister's. We got here in June, but um, yeah. in the area. But we've been here for, you know, we've been here all summer. All summer. We've been here all summer, and we've yep. been in stationary one place all summer, and it's like, okay, again, I like being here with family and being able to see everybody, but that's not why we're living in an RV, you know? We camp hosted the previous three summers. That's different to be in one place and camp host. I'm ready to hit the road. I am 
more than ready to hitch up and papoom. I have mixed feelings. <laughs> Because yeah, she I does. I love being here. I love being with my family and friends. We could pitch a tent. You could stay, and I could, you know, we could. You we could, could take off and go. You know, we could duo call, and yeah, you know, okay. we could Zoom call and stuff like See ya. that. <laughs> Why not? I spent the holiday by oh myself. Oh my gosh! <laughs> if you guys aren't tired of hearing about that, I am. Oh jeez. Yes, I have mixed feelings. Oh, and my shoot. mom, of course, laying on the guilt trip. What am I going to do without oh, geez. you? <laughs> so I'm going to go spend a couple more nights with her before we leave. Well, you know what I need to do? I need to fix her up with Zoom on her home computer uh -huh. to where I can team viewer her, get into it, start her Zoom for her, and then connect with us. <laughs> That's what I need to do. Yep. But she's also talking about me coming, rescuing her or helping her with stuff with my aunt and just, you know, stuff at her place. And so. Oh, well. I have a brother and two sisters that live here. However, they work full time. They have their families. They have their home. They don't have as much time free. As you I have do. you have a family. Hello. You have a home. Hello. Hello. You work full time taking care of your family. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's so needy. I am too. Yes. Goodness sakes. Yep. So anyway, I'm ready to hit the road. She's not. So you may see me in Arizona. You no, know, I winter. like I said, I have mixed feelings because I'm looking forward to going to Bakers, well, not Bakersfield, but I'm looking forward to going to see our daughter and son-in-law and grandkids in Bakersfield. Yep. And then I'm looking forward to seeing our friends down in southern Arizona. Yeah. So, so I am looking forward to those things. It'll be lots of lots of fun. But, uh, you know, I I've been very comfortable being here and not traveling. You know, because we're living the full time. RV lifestyle for the travel, but also for the simplicity of the lifestyle. Exactly. And I think that's True. the biggest part. It's and the convenience of being able to be where we want to be when we want to be there, um, instead of being stuck in a sticks and bricks and having jobs that we can't take with us and not Very being able true. to be places, you know, um, I was able to be with Jolene on her birthday, and that's the first time in forever. Yeah, I mean, even though we were here last, well, we were in Truckee for her birthday last year. Um, we were working. Yeah, you know, we were dedicated to be up there. It's different. This is the first yeah. time in forever that we've been able mm -hmm. to spend a birthday with her. Yep, exactly. So. That's why I have mixed feelings about it, but I'm looking forward to getting down and seeing um, Ashley, our yeah. other daughter, and her family, and Salem yeah. is two and a half now. And She'll Dean is what, ten? Ten. He just turned ten. Yeah. And um, I'm anxious to see them. Yeah. So We're they spend just, some time with them. They recently moved into a different house, mm -hmm. and so they're loving it, and they're anxious for us to see it. So, um, you know, there's... There's that. You know, that's why I have mixed feelings. I'll miss everybody here, but I'm looking forward to going and seeing her and then seeing our friends in southern Arizona. So, you know, we talk, We did a Zoom call with Dave and Kara and our friends from Our Endeavor, and uh, we started talking about some plans, um, hopefully with Bob and Pearl from Next Exit. Um, we're all down in the Yuma area. Trying to, trying to figure out different ways to go from where they are in Oregon and us here in Reno and kind of mosey maybe together a little bit on down that way but you never know you know we'll see but uh, exactly we're looking forward to so the Bob winter. So Bob and Pearl we we have been discussing what holiday and we actually prefer Christmas because we won't be in that area at Thanksgiving yeah. so because uh, we have Thanksmas with the kids in mm -hmm. Bakersfield. So, so we'll we'll figure it out Yep. As we go. Yep. Well. And we are going to go. At least one of us. <laughs> <laughs> We're going. <laughs> Together. 
Oh my gosh, thank you guys so much for watching. We appreciate you coming along on our journey of this RV lifestyle. We and really do appreciate each and every one of you guys. And even though we haven't been traveling, it doesn't mean we're not living an RV lifestyle full time yeah. because we are. So, If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Click the button, get the bell, clank it. Get notified every time we put up a brand new video. <laughs> clang, clang, clang with the bell. <laughs> okay, what song did that come from? Oh my god. Put it in the, in the comments below. We're done. We're done. See ya. See ya. <laughs> You're as goofy as the fruitcake sisters. Well, where do you think I get it from? One's my mom and one is my godmom, so... You're the one with the Looney Tune hat.